Welcome to Rootstem and welcome to this slopper painting tutorial. Hi guys, thank you very much for joining me today. And on today's video, we are going to be doing this uh, Big B Grump Crump Big B Crump mm, Crumb. Big, big crumb, that's the one. Rattling slopper. Um, I've got them in different constitutional bits because of course it's gonna be easier for me to be able to paint it. I'm gonna be using some airbrush technique, gonna be using some green stuff world paint. And of course, gonna be using some workshop paint. But just a little word of warning if you do have this figure, this little bit here is so thinly attached that I don't know how many times I've had to re-glue the damn thing, but I've had to do it loads. It is not the greatest bit to put together. It was quite irritating, if I'm completely honest. Um, but let's get this guy undercoated. Let's get these bits undercoated and we're gonna take it from there. So we've got everything separated. The first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is the little crock pot uh, or metal stew pot. And I'm gonna, that's gonna annoy me, I know it is. Um, and this has been done with chaos black and then it's been gone over with uh, some hard coat to make it a gloss varnish because we're going to be using I'm hoping that lid's not going to fly off in five seconds we're going to be using some emerald gateway color shift metal paint from green stuff world i do like this stuff so for the wobbly camera and that's going to give that sort of duo tone shine that we're looking for we're looking to actually paint this guy up not quick quick but quickish and sometimes you want an effect so this type of paint is really good to get you that sort of hey it doesn't that look cool and it kind of can kind of distract sometimes at the fact that you might have done this really fast While we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna get some iron hands steel. We're gonna get a heavy dry brush on this base. So I'm not gonna, I wanted to kinda, of, this is a very old technique for silver painting. Keep some of the black there. I'm just gonna dry brush this on. We're gonna get some storm off silver and we are going to kind of dry brush the edge with that, go right into the middle, there you go, that's creating a nice highlight already, just using two different types of silver, this is a really quick and easy, this is a very old school technique as well, we're getting this done. Okay, so now that this particular green is dry, we are now going to paint the inner workings. I'm going to use Moog Green, so it's going to take several layers to get that to the colour that I need it to be a solid colour. And if you're using, if you're having the uh, arm, that sort of squid-like uh, tentacle sticking out, I'm going to paint this Moog Green as well. Uh, but only on the top, so the bottom we're going to remain. Um, just try and keep that as mechanic as standard grey as you can. You haven't got to be too neat. But you will need several layers. If you want to airbrush this bit, you can do. Make sure you cover that up properly before doing so, because you might be able to get the layers on a lot easier with the airbrush, but we're just gonna hand paint this for now. Like I say, it's not supposed to be totally neat if, I, if you want to do it like that, so you can get into all the crevices, and then we'll come back and tidy that up later. Just make sure you do the inner workings of this damn thing. Keep it nice and thin. Got it on a wet palette here, which is just off camera. I'm just gonna make sure that everything gets sorted. I've got the paint to the shade I kind of want it, moot green, and now we're just gonna use some oak flesh. So we're gonna take it down with oak flesh, and that is gonna give us a kind of shade. And then we're gonna bring it back up again. I 
while we're waiting for this green to dry, we're gonna get some of fuel and gray. We're gonna start painting up this guy's kind of white t-shirt. Now this is quite thin, so I'm definitely gonna need several coats of this. The reason I'm using Ulf Fuen Grey is that it's very, very similar to white without it being white. So it means we can actually highlight it and shade it all the rest of the good stuff. So we've got a nice solid white on there. Just gonna let that dry properly. We're gonna go back to the green. Now, what I've done with the green is I still had some in my wet palette. So I've just come back over, just thinly, uh, after the shade, and then of course started picking out the little details. I've now added some flash gates yellow to my green. Bring it across. All nice and thin. And I'm just gonna show you on this one. What I'm gonna start doing is the bubbles. I'm gonna start picking them out. And I'll do a little bit of highlights, and then we'll add some more yellow. And we'll pick the bubbles out even more. I'm gonna paint them a bit like you paint sort of pus pustule spots. So the white is nice and settled. The well, sorry, not the white, but the grey, the off one grey. And we're gonna go across this now in a proper carry white because this is actually a really good way of actually sort of shading. It just gives it that subtle sort of deeper colour. Put that all over the white we've just painted. I keep saying white, I meant grey. It's because it's so bright. So, next up, we're going to be doing uh, the do rag on his head. And that's going to be painted up with some calabite green. And we're also going to be doing his trousers. So, the initial colour on that. Again, just going to be doing it with some calabite green, just ignoring the salt and pepper shake, well, the pepper shaker and everything else that he's got down by his side. While I'm waiting for the green to dry, I'm just going to paint up his metallic areas. So we've got the cooker-like pistol. And this is with uh, the brass, the iron, no, sorry, iron hand steel. Don't worry about the wrap, but we'll get to that in a moment. And what we're also going to do is to do the entirety of his ladle. And that's also going to be in iron hand steel. Just be careful if you've made the same, got the same error that I've had where the uh, the end is, is very, very brittle. Just be really, really careful when painting that section. Yeah. Snap off, whatever you do. So with both of them too dry, I'm going to do a couple of shades. So we've got some uh, Afo and a, mm, yes, camo shade. This is an older uh, camo shade that I've got. We're going to be painting all the green with this. And of course, all the silver, the usual. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is awesome, isn't it? So our next green steps, I'm mixing some warpstone glow, with a bit of water, of course, into there. And I'm going to just use it as a bit of a highlight, make sure it's quite nice and thin. Let's do a couple of layers of this. Over the green. The building up the left, try and keep going in the same direction. Cloth. Add a little more warpstone glow to your mix and repeat. Just try and keep away from any sort of recess.
Then just some pure warpstone glow. We kind of give that the old hedge highlight treatment. So I skipped ahead a little. We've got some stone more silver that I've put on the silver pieces, and then of course I've used some Dumbo Brown as a base for his apron. I've mixed the Dumbo with Scrag Brown, and we are just going to sort of try and highlight that with a bit of this. I may have made that too runny. But we're going to highlight his schmuck with this colour until we get a very nice so well, apologies for a little bit of camera roll then so the uh, slopper dude is I've done the um, the smock I've gone across some of the bits of rope using your shabti bone. This little pouches is Talan sand and I've done a rhinox hide doing the same thing as I did here with the um, scrag brown. I did a rhinox hide with scrag brown highlight there doing just basically layering it up like I did on his belly. Then we've got some agric surf shade. The reason I've done all this together is because this agric surf shade now goes over everything that we've done. And fingers crossed, brings it all together. So we're going to crack on now with some black. I've already painted the black in. This is kind of on the shoulder pads and the little strap that goes around and the boot. I've just got some bit of water, some dark reaper. That's going to be our first sort of stage. See why it's separated because it's been a while. black I quite like that reaper as a black highlight it's got that sort of kind of blue grey quality to it see because it's already drying it dries quite dark so then we're going to add a little bit of mechanica standard gray to the mix a little bit of water to make sure it's all nice and translucent we apply a bit more and boost up those highlights Keep going until you're happy with it. So a couple of skips, prepping some areas and going back and doing some other things. So I've done the panel on his chest, the silver that we did on the others, just gonna to need to highlight it. Same as with the foot, that silver's been done after we've done the blue. And what we've done as well is to do the wrap on the gun and on the leg. We've done that in gray here. I'm just gonna go over it in skeletal horde. I should make it look like some form of mucky bandage, maybe. I know it'll look like bone, but it'll 
come across, especially because of course of where it is, it'll come across more like a wrap than anything else. If I do that right here as well. Now you can if you want to do the one in his wrist like this, but I'm going to do right a different colour. Skin wise, we've gone and painted the skin with its uh, rat skin flesh to start with. It's as much close to dwarf flesh, one of my old favourites, as I uh, as I like. Now I'm going to get a little bit of uh, Reichlin flesh shade, and we're just going to go all over the flesh that we've just painted. Make sure it's completely dry before doing this. So recon flesh, flesh, uh, recon flesh shade has dried. I've gone back in with a watered down rat skin. We're now going to go to a Kislev flesh. We're going to kind of mix that in a little. What we're going to do is to layer this up. As you can see, it's quite runny. I've got a very thin brush. So. So next step, we're going to cheat a little bit. I've gone and done his beard hair and his foot hair, because of course he's a rattling, in some grey sear. And we're just going to use wild wood just to paint up and give him brown. And if you want to use a different colour, you can do. But sometimes it's nice just to use these contrast paints just to do little things that you think to yourself. I can just get that done quickly and easily. Well, it can be quite dark, which is why I'm using it kind of sparingly. And then once you've done the one old wood, so I'm just going to be able to just leave that now. Gonna clean your brush. I'm going to go into Black Templar, and what we're going to do with Black Templar is a lot of sort of the boot and things that's on the model is very dark, so I'm just going to kind of thin it down just a little bit with maybe a bit of water. And then we're just going to paint that silver boot. I'm going to do the handle here, so just be careful around my hand. Don't be very under control, can I? Now I'm going to have a look at doing this red bracelet. Now, I, I was going to sort of do it off camera, but I thought a lot of people might not know how to paint the style of red that I use. I've got um, Corn Red, and I've got Evil Sun Scarlet on my wet palette. I'm just going to sort of block it in with the corn red. Corn red is a base paint. It's actually quite a good base paint. I know it, uh, just when you put it over Mechanica Standard Grey. It's a little watered down. You're only going to need, well, a couple of coats of this at the flat. Then I've mixed uh, some of the red with the dark. And I'm just kind of going to go in lines because it is like a, a, a leathery type of wristband, don't it? Or it can be whatever you want. So I'm just going to go like that. 
across the bottom and then I'll go up just to tidy it up from the opposite side, same this way, just flowing in one direction. And then add a bit more red. Water it down, don't have it as pure. Keep it quite nice and light. Kind of like a wash or a glaze at the bottom. Hang on there. There you go, that's a quick, simple red. So, we've gone away from the figure. I've actually painted up his eyes, but I'm not going to show you how to do that because I'm terrible at doing it myself, so it's not going to bother. Uh, I can do it, but not when I'm actually on camera. I've loaded up a little bit of, um, it'll be corn red or in the airbrush. And we're going to kind of spray into that sort of central hole. Just maybe try and get a slight feathered effect. We don't want it to be too much. So I'm going to decrease my compressor down to about 20 PSI. There we go. Um, and I just want a slight feathering effect. Then we're going to add a little bit of the old Evil Sun Scarlet, so using the red formula again. Then we're going to go more into the centre, then we're going to come back and we're kind of going to paint it up. So that's dried, that's dried pretty quickly. And I've got some Rhinox hide here. Oof. And we are going to just paint the tops of the metals. And the reason we're gonna paint the tops of the metals is just, let me see that I can them off. And then, I'm going to start to brighten them back up again. We've got some Evil Sun Scarlet next to it on the wet palette, and we've also got some Fire Dragon Bright or Orange or whatever it wants to call it. So. And there you have it, we have the slopper and its little tube. And if I'm honest with you, that all comes away. I've not glued any of that down and that's for the client to decide. Well, thank you very much for watching guys. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you do want to see more. Um, hopefully having a few more Necromunda and character figures coming up on the channel. Fingers crossed, keep watching, etc, etc. And I hope you guys have a good time. And we'll see you next time on Rootstamp.